For most of human history, a far smaller population with lower energy needs relied on human and animal power, water, wind and wood, creating a much darker view of our world than this. But during the 19th and 20th centuries, the fossil fuels, coal, gas and oil began to dominate energy use, meeting over 85% of our needs today. In 1824, a French scientist called Joseph Fourier realized that gases in the atmosphere warm the earth by trapping the sun's heat. He called this the greenhouse effect. In 1859, John Tyndall identified one of these as carbon dioxide, a gas released when fossil fuels are burnt. By 1896, the Swedish physicist Svan Terenius was linking fossil fuel burning with rising carbon dioxide levels and an increase in global temperature. In the second half of the 20th century, scientists, governments and environmentalists began to argue over the idea and potential impact of man-made climate change. At the same time, world population was rising and with it demand for resources, and fossil fuels began to affect virtually every aspect of our lives, from powering our homes, gadgets and transport, to producing our clothes, medicines and food. In 1997, 80 world leaders met in Kyoto, Japan, to discuss the effect of global warming on species and food and water supplies. As a result, the vast majority of the world's countries, including the UK, agreed to cut their carbon dioxide emissions and much smaller amounts of five other greenhouse gases by 80% by 2050. The UK, despite its tiny size, is one of the top 10 carbon dioxide producing countries in the world and the second largest in history, with each of us creating around 10 tonnes of carbon dioxide a year, a hundred times more than many other nations. This series of films shows how we have got to this point, but first let's look a little more closely at carbon. Carbon is the fourth most common type of atom in the universe. It is found in our bodies and in all living things. The size of a carbon molecule compared to this football is roughly the same size as a football compared to the Earth. Carbon is also found in other planets and in the stars in which it is made. There are said to be more atoms in a spoonful of carbon than there are stars in the entire universe and more stars in the universe than grains of sand on Earth. Carbon affects our climate and our food, water and oxygen supplies, moving in a never-ending cycle between the atmosphere and the Earth's surface. Most is released as carbon dioxide, when oceans warm, volcanoes erupt, soils are moved, rocks are worn, and bacteria and animals decay and breathe. It is then recycled back through forests, vegetation and soils, and oceans in which 90% is stored. Carbon dioxide is also known as CO2, as each carbon atom has two oxygen atoms attached. As carbon dioxide is released from the Earth's surface, it becomes trapped in the atmosphere along with other greenhouse gases, water vapour and nitrous oxide, as well as powerful methane. These greenhouse gases form less than 1% of our atmosphere compared to nitrogen and oxygen's 99% share, but they are critical for our survival. For as the sun's rays bounce off the earth, these gases absorb some of its heat and return it back to the planet's surface. This creates a warm blanket around the earth, allowing water and life to exist. Without these gases, earth would become a frozen waste. Too much of them, an earth will warm, causing ice caps to melt, coasts to flood, and crops and species to be destroyed.